On this episode of the Mac Talks, episode 48, we have on Matt Barlamay, owner of Barch Tree Service. Good friend of mine, excited to have him on to talk about his career and how he got into the industry that he got into. Let's go. Chase, tell the people what the Mac Talks are. If you're an entrepreneur, impactful leader, or business owner, the Mac Talks are that vehicle that brings you the stories that you need to hear. That's right, real stories from real leaders. Check us out every Thursday. Welcome everybody, episode 48 on this long holiday bender that we've been on now. It feels like we've been in holiday season for how long now? I feel like you've lost your voice a little bit. I have. Too. I You're have. from well, yelling at each other at a bar. We we have a lot of <laughs> arguments, especially over the holiday season. But but today it's not about arguments. Today it's about our boy Matt Barthelemy. Barthelemy, say it. You could say Bartelmi or Barthelemy. If you want to be French, <laughs> the best French arborist <laughs> in the business, baby, is on the Mac Talks. Joining us today. Super excited. Uh, formed a relationship with this fella years back when I owned Vision Designs. Um, you know, I've always admired uh, his hard work and uh, what he does and how he gives back to the community. Uh, he's involved in a lot of different things, and uh, we're happy to have him on the show to chop it up. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. It's awesome. Awesome. I know you just got back from uh, from traveling, correct? Yes. Uh, did 10 days down in the uh, Cancun area. Nice. How was that? That was outstanding. Did you get to see the cartel or what? <laughs> uh, no, I was waiting, but uh, they, <laughs> they didn't, didn't come. Anything. That's good. That's a good no. thing. That's a good thing. I think I got offered drugs like 900 times walking down one street. Always. There, I know, heard like, that about oh. Mexico. Yeah, Always. I've never, I've never been asked if I want Coke that many times. <laughs> wow. It's like, okay, wow. What's going on here? Yes. Yeah, you seriously. can get anything down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And my co-host, Chase Hutchison. Hey, guys. There he is. Happy looking to be all, here. Look at him. Got a new haircut. Happy to be here. He's in layer season. This is called layer season. Yeah, yeah. This is the season where he layers his hair. It's for everybody, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking. Yeah, I'm talking about clothes and hair. Yeah, yeah. but you're, you're. This is your season. This where is you my go third home. layer. Yeah, that's good to change it up once in a while. Yeah, keep it real. It is. <laughs> so you had your. Then you came back. You had your holiday party, correct? Yes. Yeah, so, well, we came back the night of the uh, ice, so that was lovely. Standing you know, oh. in shorts at the top of my driveway, looking down a steep hill that I could just skate down. I'm like what, at midnight, what am I going to do now? Yeah, right. That's <laughs> so. crazy. Um, so tell us. Let's kind of talk about your career. Let's kind of take it back to the beginning. Where did sure. you? What did you start? Uh, you didn't. You weren't always in the tree business, were you? No, it's, it's been an a, interesting story. Yeah, isn't this is it? a little weird. Yeah. Um, so I'm a machinist by trade. Went to Abbott Tech. Nice. Um, and then out of there, I pretty much got more into the inspection side of things, and you know all the tolerancing and whatnot. Nice. So I worked at a couple of machine shops in town. Um, and then that moved on to where I got a gig down in Stanford at the Pitney Bowes. Yep. And I was pretty good with the computers back then. So this is, you know, 1989, 1990. Um, when they used those floppy disks. <clears throat> oh, I, they were like this big. Yeah. Like a 12-inch floppy <laughs> disk. those zip, the yeah. zip ones or whatever they were oh, called? Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Those are funny, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's when we were still modem dialing on the internet. And for 14.4, I think it was. Yeah, um, yep, yep. So... I was down there. The timing was good where I got into Pitney Bowes where the computers were just coming in. A lot of the workforce there was, you know, 20, 30 year service uh, level. So yep. they thought computers were the end of the world. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I got into programming, you know, coordinate measuring machines and doing that. So I, I came up through the ranks pretty quick there. And uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of great people. Um, then I wound up managing all the quality, um, then wound up going over and uh, taking a big leap a couple years later when went over to the new product development side. Yep. And that was a lot of fun. So you're doing a lot of sourcing going out. So you were in everything. the Stanford location, right? At that time, I had offices in like Stanford, uh, Shelton, and Danbury. So okay. I was always doing sourcing for new products and getting the new product development with supply chain. I was always responsible for how we're going to make it, making sure the uh, financial and quality goals are all met, and then working with the engineering and marketing teams to achieve those goals. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so it was a lot of travel and a lot of fun times with that. Yeah, yep. Um, then things started to get a little ugly in Pitney Bowes. Um, yeah. But during that... Um, I had a couple of, I bought a house over in Danbury and had a couple of trees that I had to cut down mm -hmm. and I was always good with a chainsaw and firewood perspective. So, you know, some of them I could fell and get down and yeah. <clears throat> it was always a lot of funny stories. Cause I think back then I had this pumpkin orange Mustang yep. that had a four cylinder in it with a stick <laughs> and it had a hitch on the back. So yeah. I would tie I a rope, going. I would tie I a rope to that going. thing, be like dumping the clutch, <laughs> flying up the driveway to pull some tree over. 
Like, if anybody saw this stuff, it'd be a YouTube sensation for how oh not to gosh. do tree work right that now. That is so funny. Um, but then there was one time, there was one I knew was way outside of my wheelhouse. I'd be sending it through the roof. And uh, my father-in-law at the time had a buddy that climbed trees. And he came over, and I was, like, watching this guy like a monkey. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. Like, yeah. Well, I got to figure out how to do this stuff. Yeah. So my old man had, like, some old AT&T belt and some rusty old spikes. So I'd go up, you know, 20, 30 feet. My knees are knocking, like, oh, my God. Get a rope in there and do some rigging a little bit. Uh, but then it was pretty much just self-taught at that point. Where, it, But unfortunately, it wasn't a lot of stuff for arboriculture. So it was really going out and you'd find nautical books or uh, climbing books for mountain climbing and knots and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I got involved with the uh, ISA, which is International Society of Arboriculture, and then the Tree Care Industry Association. And went to my, my, my first conference, and I was like the holy grail. Yeah, the, that's what you're oh, This yeah. is everything. Yeah. You know, they actually set up like a huge tree in the middle of the arena, and they're tying and rigging things and going through actual removal scenarios. And I was like, oh, this is exactly. Did you it. have that? Like, were you the type of, when you were a kid, were you just <clears throat> always outdoors, always yeah. climbing trees? Totally, like, yeah. Boy Scout type shit? Like, yeah, you were always... I was a Boy Scout. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, I grew. My parents were caretakers on a big estate, so I was like, it was 150 acres that you know I thought was my house. Yeah, they were just <laughs> caretakers for the house. Yeah. Like, what do you mean we're moving? <laughs> this isn't ours. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, That's so, you know, you had like a 30, 40 minute walk before you got to somebody else's house yeah. uh, in any direction. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, it was, That's funny. So uh, I was always outside and loved it. And uh, at that time, that was the other thing. So, you know, you do that at your house and all of a sudden your other friends that just bought houses are all like, oh, I got this tree. You got to yeah. come take a look at it. Yep. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'll see you made like 400 bucks on a Saturday or something. You're like, oh, this is pretty good. You yeah. Know? I'm like, all right. It started getting a little synergy and the weekend warrior type thing. And, yeah. You know, you'd run out and rent a chipper once in a while and try to, you know, get rid how of the How old material. are you when you just, how old were you at this point when you just started uh, to kind of get into the. Uh, I was probably in my. Still young, right? Uh, 30s, mid 30s. Oh, okay. oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Because I think. I got out of Pitney Bowes in 2005, and that's kind of when I had Bart's Tree Service started as a little side yeah, a little business, side kind of weekend. That was a big weekend warrior at that point. But, yeah. Um, and then it, it became full-time shortly thereafter. Um, I lucked out that there was a guy in my neighborhood who was a landscaper. He was from Brazil. Yep. And uh, uh, Moro. And he could climb a tree fantastic, but like just out of pure strength. Yeah. And nobody ever really no taught skill. him anything. So yeah, yeah. I started working with him, and it was great because he had the landscaping business. So they were busy Thursday, Friday, Saturday get everything ready for the weekends. So we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I would use him those three days, go out and get everything going. And then I started taking him to classes and showing him more stuff. So um, that was where it really became, uh, you know, growing real quick. That's great, man. That's a great story. Because yeah. a lot of times with, especially with inside of this industry, it's usually like, you know, my dad did it right. and then I grew up in it and now yeah. I do it. And it's kind of funny how you got into the industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's also really cool how you were able to, you know, you obviously you you have the you know the technical skills to be able to do it and to be able to learn it, but then you also are obviously savvy enough to be able to grow it, <laughs> which a lot of well, tree guys might yeah. have an issue with. And you know what I mean? But you have that yeah. ability, you know, where you have that as well. My timing was great because it's like back then I used to make websites and stuff at Pitney Bowes and do all of that. So yep. I was the only tree guy that had a website in 2005. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Big advantage. So you know, I had that, and then <clears throat> social media came shortly thereafter, and then obviously being you know I was like responsible for customer satisfaction and everything at Pitney Bowes and all using those principles a lot of your guys around here were kind of your old school yeah they make a big mess give me the money I'm out of here I don't care about it whatever yeah you, know? you so brought that more you, white glove you, service right yep. so and, and people really like that you know it's like I, I always say everybody a lot of these guys around here they can get a tree down on the ground and get it out of there no problem it's you know it should look nicer than when I got there yeah, that's what differentiates the quality, and you know, it didn't hit your house, it didn't hit your fence. Okay. Yeah, and also just the professionalism behind. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be there at this time. Yep. Our guys Follow are going to have on safety equipment. Yeah. You're protected. It's you know what I oh, mean. Yeah. Like that's you guys kind of stand out different than any other tree company that's really around here. You know what I mean? And and that goes hand in hand with your truck, which is awesome. You've seen his <laughs> truck, dude. It's like this. Huge dually with a oh, big chainsaw. Tall, got a gigantic chainsaw, but it's like a almost like a cartoon type thing. It's oh, really? Really, really cool. Yeah, oh, you sick. see him barreling down. Yeah. I see him at all the good, um, 
all the good uh, eat, eating spots around town, like you know, all the good food spots. I'm like, yeah. oh, look, he's at Incas. Oh, look, he's over getting hibachi. Oh, look, he's over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get, Dude eats well. I'm always getting shouted out anytime, Yeah, anywhere. because he stands out, like, you know what I mean? So it's he, so funny. It was even funny. A couple of times we, we got gift certificates for that Hotel Zero yeah. or something. So we're like, all right, let's go to do a little staycation one night. Yeah, right. So as soon as all the plow guys know me, uh, what are you doing over there? Yeah. What are, what are you doing at the hotel? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm with my girlfriend. It's yeah, like, hey. right? That's so funny. That's hilarious. So, um, so it was just you and, and your neighbor, um, you know, it was part-time. Then you quit, quit Pitney Bowes. You transitioned into it full-time. No, at that point I was, went off to do a lot of consulting. So I had another friend that left Pitney Bowes before that. And she was working for this company, Business Genetics. And, uh, we did a lot of like requirements generation, uh, uh, gap fit analysis, SAP gap fits, things of that nature. Yep. Um, and they had a really cool methodology and tool. And, uh, I was going to take the summer off and she's like, no, 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 you got to come and help me. And she's working at Wachovia Bank. And I'm like, I came from manufacturing. I don't yeah. know anything about banking. Like, yeah, right. But luckily, this methodology and the tool did work. I mean, it was really like a three-year-old. It's the who, what, where, when, how. And yeah. It breaks it down into such simplistic terms that, you know, the, the people who have been doing it for 30 years, it becomes glaringly obvious. They're like, oh, that's horribly inefficient. Yeah. Why are we doing that? Yeah. And it's very purpose-based. So, um, yeah, we went into, you know, Wachovia Bank and told them how to reconcile their general ledger because they bought so many banks and couldn't roll it up. And they're yep. plugging the GL for like a million here and there yep. because they yep. don't know what's going on. <laughs> and their computer systems don't talk all the same language. Yeah. Um, so got in there. It's and like, then oh, we didn't think about that when we yeah. decided to suck up all these other yes, companies. How exactly. are they going to talk to each other? <laughs> right. So that was a fun one. And I wound up doing a lot of military work and, uh, you know, uh, FDA work and uh, nuclear power plants and stuff like That's that. Awesome, so it was a really a lot of fun. And that was a lot of travel. I would fly out like every Monday and come back every like Thursday pretty oh, wow. much um, so that's where it was really good that I had uh, this awesome team and Moro the guy running it was fantastic so I would come home on the weekends run around do a bunch of quotes write everything up write take work orders give them to them and then I my last gig was good because I was down in uh, San Onofre uh, the nuclear power plant down yep. in San Diego and the time difference was good. I'd still get up on Connecticut time, answer all my phone calls, <laughs> then go to the office and Jeez. work that job. True and, entrepreneur. And it got to the point where you're like, all right, I'm kind of losing money doing consulting. Yeah. You know, and it's like, all right. And but we always have to but think about it. But it allowed you to get to yeah, have it all to be back. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then it was you got to think about where we are usually only busy about 10 months a year, nine months a year. So you're like, got to be able to bridge that winter gap and have a yeah. little tucked away to make exactly. it. Exactly, so, yeah. So you got to get a running start. So that was the biggest, you know, risk factor, but uh, it really worked out well and uh, it's been going strong. Yeah, so how many uh, how many employees do you have now? Um, right now we have, what, uh, there's four full-time and then we have like four part-time. Yep. I mean, and you've got some, <clears throat> this guy's got some amazing equipment. I mean, some of the shit that you have and just some of the shit that I see you post when you go um, to shows and stuff. Yeah, stuff we're going to get some more really cool stuff. Unbelievable. Um, I'm, I was going to say, I'm pleading ignorance here, but have you expanded into other types of services aside from just tree service? No, actually, we've done the opposite. So in the beginning, it was Bart's tree stump and stone. So we would do patios and stone walls. Oh, balls, but okay. Really, okay. is not our core competency. So we are licensed and certified arborists in the area. So... That's our core focus and really our niche market. So yeah, and a lot of tree guys aren't really licensed arborists. No, that's are they? always that's all I spend most of my time is just, just telling, educating, educating people. people. Because you look at Danbury, for instance. So we have I think there is uh, four or five licensed or sorry, uh, four or five licensed arborists in yeah. the Danbury area. So it's mainly the Sabre Tree, the Bartlett, me, Peter Radlett. Uh, I think there's one other guy, but he doesn't have a company just because consulting. Yep. So then you have, you know, then you look around, there's like 300 tree guys that mm -hmm. say yeah. tree stuff on their truck, you know, along with gutter cleaning and whatever else they do. Yep. And yep. then uh, then there's certified arborists, which is a higher criteria uh, that you got to take this huge test and go through. So I have that. There's another guy in New Fairfield that has that. I don't think in Danbury anybody else has the certified criteria right now, but... So yeah. that really sets you apart that you're into the arts and sciences of tree care. And yeah, see, that's a big difference right there. Uh, because there's people don't realize, you know, they're like, oh, prune it. And it's like there's really a, a lot of ways, you different trees and how you prune them. Yep. And some of it can really create hazardous and dangerous conditions down the road or make yeah. these things grow in forms that are horrible, that are a lot Plus more that, I mean, they get like <clears throat> lots of, you know, just different infections and oh, diseases. Yeah. And, and you got to know how to treat that or yes. you're going to lose the tree, which yeah. could screw up your landscape and right. everything else. Yeah, I mean, right now, the invasive thing we have it's just it seems to be one wave after another so we've got emerald ash borer beetle just came through the area oh wow so we inject those trees kind of just like you would get yeah, an iv yeah we put some flu shots bro yeah basically that's that's what it is yeah, really yeah you put
put it inside and it uh, you know goes through the whole tree, stays there for two years, so all the bugs die. They can't lay eggs in there. And those are the only ash trees that are surviving right now. Everyone else is gone. Yeah. You know, then we have a new thing coming. It's called lantern fly. They're coming into the area. That's gonna be the next one that we gotta, you know, go and try to fight off and keep some of these trees so they don't just all disappear. Yeah, so you constantly have to educate to know what's oh, yeah. coming, right? Because it comes through yeah, you know. Goes, yeah. passes through a certain area and even you know for it's, it's not just me like all my guys go through a lot of classes all the time so for all the credentials we have for me specifically like i have to maintain probably 30 to 50 ceus the continuing education credits per year oh wow i probably get about 80 to 100 a year because of all the things we go to and the, that we do yeah um but oh, you mean you're learning when you go to those things yeah. when you're when yeah. you put your it's feet not up? just no i don't. here at the bar <laughs> yeah right it's after <laughs> yeah i know right yeah it's cool man that's that's really cool and it, it is what you said like it's there's a science and an art behind it right you know i mean it's a living <laughs> something that's living yeah. and it's something that's you know what's the how do you tell like a tree's age is it is it the rings you know well that's can talk if about you that? can count it but you, you but know, you can't do that until it comes down cut it down so i mean a lot of you're going to go by species you know you compare like a white pine which is a very soft tree grows very rapidly uh, you know versus a, a red oak or a white oak which grows very slowly so you yeah. know when you walk up and you see a, a a white oak that's 36 inches or greater you know you're knocking on a 100 150 year old yeah. tree wow. and, you know greater that's we've crazy. got some around here that are 300 years old yeah i have one of those laying in my yard right now yeah. you wouldn't believe the size <laughs> of it, it's huge oh, and yeah. we can't pay to get it taken out because it would cost like a lot of money yeah so we've been working on it with a couple with chainsaws taking off pieces Just of it. it out yep and we're slowly but surely it's yeah. a huge job man it's a huge job i've been doing that stuff for years though I, but we always did it ourselves yeah even last summer i was up in the I, my dad, he's his dad is he's his insane. Dad does the type of stuff that you were just talking about mm -hmm. earlier? Right. He was telling these stories. He'd be like, he's insane, he's just, but he's too old to do the stuff that he wants to do. So yeah. he makes me do it. <laughs> so he, he's like, trickle down. Yeah. He's like, some one time we tied a rope to a tennis ball. He's like, I want to take this branch down because it's hanging above our deck, and I don't want it to fall on our deck and damage it. So he tied a rope to a tennis ball, and he had me like throw the tennis ball through the branch of the tree yep. to pull it down. And then it wasn't working because I don't have a good arm. And I so I took my lacrosse stick and I threw it oh, yeah, up with yeah. my lacrosse stick Thread and the we needle. it down. Nice. Yeah, it was sick. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have this little thing. They're, they're different sizes. It's a little uh, bag. It's full of uh, lead shot. So you mm -hmm. got 10 ounce, 12 ounce, 20 ounce, whatever you want. And then the, we have this slingshot that is probably about six oh. feet tall. Oh, nice. So oh, wow. That, so it does that. You can launch it like 125, oh, 150 whoa. feet wow. straight out. <laughs> That is cool. But that's even cool. the little one, if because it's really cool if you go to like the climbing competitions, that's one of the events. Do your guys do that? Do they uh, go? Mine no, have it. I keep trying they're to too encourage. Busy. Them. I keep trying to get some of them to go to a yeah, bunch yeah. of them. So there, there's a lot of people locally uh, that go to them around here, and it's awesome event to go watch. And one of them is accuracy for throw ball, and you got to be able to reach like 80 feet up. Yeah. Wow. So they put duct tape on each one of the crotches. So this is red. You got to get it through the red one. Then you got to get it through the yellow one. Then you got to get it through that's the purple damn. one. And they time wow. it. So it's really wild. That'd be cool to see your guys. Uh, to see your guys doing. Something some of that oh, yeah, that'd fun. be pretty neat i mean because you got some guys that <laughs> it's on youtube right i mean the way that these oh, yeah. guys can climb these trees are just oh, yeah. like it's and they'll a, fly from one tree yeah, to the next swing from it's faster. one to the next yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just instead of get climbing instead of going down you know yeah. but that's awesome man and that's i mean you've done a great job in in growing the business um and then something else that you've always done which i mentioned in the beginning was you always give back and you're always a part of the community um yeah. you know i know you're always sponsoring different events um, different charities and things like that. So, right. um, and you're the president. Are you the president of the uh, Kiwanis? Kiwanis? No, I was. I'm a past president. So okay. now I'm what's called the lieutenant governor. So I'm responsible for all of them in Fairfield County. Oh wow, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about about that program and kind of sure. how you look at you know when you do give back and stuff like that. How do you? Yeah, I mean that? it's a bi a big thing. I think you get to a turning point in your life where it just you know you have a little bit of the financial means and you could do some things to give back and it just feels great. And, yeah. You know, within the community, so um, I got involved with uh, the Kiwanis of Danbury. Um, and we meet, you know, every Tuesday down at Chuck Steakhouse uh, for our meetings, or not every Tuesday, I think the third or fourth Tuesday, we usually have a night meeting and do something fun, or we'll bring the kids in, go somewhere yep. and do something entertaining. Um, but we do a bunch of programs there where it's like the, 
uh, bicycle rodeo safety drive today. I just that's why I was kind of late coming to this meeting. Was we had the uh, toy drive going on with uh, Union Savings Bank and collected a bunch of toys. Plus we had a big party that collected a bunch of toys. So uh, everybody's down dressed up like Santa and Santa's nice. helpers on Main Street at the um, clinic down there giving. That's out cool. And those toys are the good Santas. Kids. Those aren't those jerks from Santa Con that <laughs> yeah. just get shit faced, yeah. wasted, not the drunk ones. Stuff. Yeah, those aren't those are those are good Santas. So if you see them down there in Danbury, don't worry. They're not. Can you explain real quick what it is, Kona? Kona. Uh, Kiwanis. 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 So Kiwanis is a big international organization. It's been around forever. So the Danbury one started in uh, the 40s. Uh, actually, their first project was they cleared all the trees at the Danbury Town Park. Which oh, I'm wow. Like, I would have loved to have been part of that. We would have yeah, right. wrecked that. Oh, yeah, right. Cool. <laughs> that would have been a good time, right? Uh, but it's all community outreach uh, for children. So it's more children specific. They have oh. an international level. They do a lot of things for like uh, neonatal tetanus that okay. they're getting rid of in Africa, and which is kills like 30, 40% of some of these newborns. Wow. Yeah. So they've almost got rid of all of that at a national level. Yep. Um, and then it goes down to you have a Northeast regional, and then you have your local reps and areas so with that you also have uh, key clubs in high schools and then there's also oh, right. clubs below that so that's where those are all going to do their community outreach uh, any of their community service we support that a lot of times they're going to be under our insurance programs so we have right now the Reading Easton Club and the Richfield Club have a safe rides program so that falls under our insurance program that they could run that uh, that's awesome. schools or out of the local churches there um, so there's a lot of stuff we do for supporting those. And it's it's a great program for the kids because they're getting in there, have their elected officials. You have a board. Um, they start to get that business sense and yep. how that works. And then also and the accountability back. Yep. and then giving back Trying to the community. To yep. um, and now colleges really look for a lot of that on your resume going forward as well. Um, so we, then we also run a bunch of other individual things. We give out nine uh, scholarships at our big breakfast that we do over at Ethan Allen every year. Yep. Uh, that goes to six different schools that we sponsor through the whole area. Um, we have, what else was it? Uh, I don't know. There's, I think, 11 different programs we have. We have the um, Giving Garden. So we partnered up in Brookfield with uh, the Master Gardeners and the Bunch Club there. So the key clubs come and help and get their hands dirty and know how to grow things and harvest it. That goes back to all the food pantries and food kitchens. That's great. Um, so a bunch of different yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a great program. There. That's awesome. And I know that you've been a part of it for a while. And I know that we spoke about if you ever need somebody to speak, I'm totally down. Yeah, I think Abigail's going to reach out to okay, you. Okay, cool. Come, yeah, I'm yeah, totally down, down to do that. that. Be um, fun, so. you know, and I know that I went to one event, but I definitely want to start to go to some more and definitely, you know, yeah, start so, to get a little more involved. And it's that, a that's great a bunch of people. Calls. We, all have, a yeah. great, we yeah. all have a lot of fun together and hang yeah. out, so it's fun. No, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So what do you have on tap in 2020? I know you mentioned you're going to be getting some new equipment. Yeah, um, what type of stuff are you getting? Because well, I know they got some real cool, it. those little goddamn spider-looking things yes. or whatever the hell they have. Those things are just like robots or some shit. Well, we, have, a, we have a 90-foot spider lift now. Wow. So uh, that is, uh, that's that's going to be paid off this coming year. So awesome. So now you know the, oh, I remember the that. Thing. I remember that game when I used to own Vision. It was, oh, we're paying this off? Oh, now we can replace that payment with a yep. new piece of equipment. Which we do that more. all the time. Which yeah, is more. This is like, yeah. It's but that's a, how you grow, though. I mean, well, that's it's a great yeah. thing to do. It's a capital-intensive like, industry. And then for yeah. us, the big thing is, one, finding labor is virtually impossible. Oh, I've heard this. And then uh, if you this. do find people, a lot of them that are like the yep. old school mentality. So for me to unteach the bad things you have, oh, I'm better off starting with somebody who's just ambitious yeah. and knows nothing. And you probably work with Abbott Tech, right? Because you, you Not mean, you yet, try but to, we're starting to they've get... They've got a good program. They, well, that's the thing now. You're starting to get a lot more working with some of the senators and these different programs that even at the federal level uh, for getting talent coming up and it used to be where it was just paul smith's college up in new york was the only one that yeah, had the only a one, but now forestry they're... program now you're starting to see them pop up in a lot of different areas and it's not just forestry it's more arboriculture so it's that urban side of it yeah um so that's exciting that you're getting a lot of that coming out of it yeah i mean it's 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 tough um you can make a lot of money doing labor like labor intensive work oh, yeah. nowadays yeah. you know plumbing electrical like they're having to like uh, I was at a, a meeting of the day and I was hearing this one guy talk about how he has to bring people in from the south and put them up in a hotel and fly them home yeah. once a month. Oh, yeah. Like that's how bad it is. Like yeah. which just seems crazy because it's, it's like across the boards. I mean, I go to good all money the meetings. But we push for minimum wage though. That's what oh, we push yeah. for. Yeah. Like that's the stupidest shit yeah. ever, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, because I, we go to the meetings with, we'll have the senators all sit down like a town hall twice a year, and everybody there who's a business owner has the same problem. Doesn't yeah. matter, like you said, any one of those trades, we're starving for talent. Yeah. And then even some of the apprenticeship programs, they have these weird yep. metrics where they can only release a certain number of people yeah. into the, like, the plumbing or electrical field for that time frame. Yep. Meanwhile, these companies are like, I need like 100 more now. So yeah. now I have to go find them elsewhere and bring them from other places. And I mean, I think you got to start younger even, like with the, oh, yeah. the, with the program that you work with, with the Qantas program. 
program. Yeah. Like you got to start like educating these parents because every so many parents just want their kids to go to college because it's right. the way the system is. And yeah. the counselors, like what I was saying, the counselors get some kind of credit. They don't get a bonus or anything, right. but like these school counselors, like they get some kind of credit when for every kid that goes to college. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it makes their record look better. So naturally, they're going to want to push as many yeah. kids into college as they can. And that's a, that's what's what what are we oh, getting out of that? We're getting kids that don't even know how to do laundry. Yep. Which, by the way, I don't know how to do laundry. So I'm not trying to shit on millennials. Whoa, you I don't. mean, I can do it if I had to. I'm just saying it's you not barely, my strength. You're not good at it's it. My, it's not my strength. It's not what I'm good at. You know what I'm saying? But we're we're producing a bunch of basement dwellers. That yeah. Play video so games like that have gotta, huge amount of debt. Yeah. And you and gotta no you gotta start like educating. I feel, and this is what was said in the <clears> in the meeting at like the sixth and seventh grade level yeah. that there's nothing wrong with not going to college yeah. and working in these apprenticeship programs where you can make a lot of money yeah. and you know and have a good future you know versus going and having a shitload of debt and doing freaking five tours in, of Call of Duty in your mom's basement yep. you know what I mean so and, and so. that is one of the things we've been doing with Kiwanis one of their programs is bring up your grades they call it bug so yeah. we go into like the South Street School and uh, they're all challenged to bring their grade up one level yep. um, and then with that we have guest speakers that come in from all different disciplines and backgrounds so just talk for like 20 minutes about their job yep. so that's one and it's all sixth graders that you're going into and I tell you I've never been asked that many questions in my yeah, life yeah right like, you want yeah. to talk about inquiring they minds they just fire them at you I right? mean I bring you know, I call my, my arborist bling bag. It's got yeah. all the shiny <laughs> climbing, everything on it. But it's fun because, you know, I bring in this other thing. It's called a porter wrap. So it's a, a mechanical device that gives the rope goes back and forth between pulleys like five times. So you have a five to one mechanical advantage. Yeah. And we kind of talk about all the math you're learning and this and trigonometry you may get into. And you're like, what am I ever going to use this for? And then, like, lo and behold, I've That's been actually using it like my entire for. career, whether machinist or arborist or whatever. You're going to yeah. use it all the time. And then, you know, I have the kids do a tug of war. I get the two biggest kids to pull on this thing. And then the one rope that pulls it together, you get the tiniest little kid that has now has a five to one mechanical advantage. Advantage. So that, that kid just pulls the yeah. two of them together. They're trying to do a tug of war. They come right together. And they think that's cool. Yeah, they love cool. it. And yeah. then we're learning about some of that stuff. So we're doing a lot more of that. And now I go to quite a few other schools that go in and kind of do the same talk about that and, you know, what we do. And, hey, we get, play, we get paid to climb trees. You know, how cool yeah. is that? No, that's um, cool, man. Yeah. So, that's yeah, really like cool. you said, you got to start young and get a little bit more of that thought process going now let me ask you have you ever had any um desire to want to do like rock climbing or like i used to do some yeah, of that because i mean if you're into if you're into yeah. that type of shit you're into that type of shit right and, and funny thing is like it's been it's a number of years it's probably going back eight ten years ago so we used to go up to maine all the time and yeah. you got all those beautiful bluffs and cliffs like over yeah. there by thunder hole uh, out on acadia national park and i brought up a whole bunch of my tree climbing gear i'm like oh yeah and i bought a few things that were more mountain specific and whatnot and we go up there so i tie off to to like one big rock, another big rock, come down to a V, and these are like seven thousand pound tensile strength ropes. Yeah. And I got one coming over the side, and you know we're got everything set up. And meanwhile, some actual mountain climbers come, and they come and like put this little tiny thing in the crack of a rock, and they have this little tiny rope, and they just jump over the edge, and they're gone. Like, yeah. and you look at what I have, you're like, yeah, mine would hold probably a car or two <laughs> hanging off the cliff. That's pretty funny though. <laughs> like, That's pretty cool. A little over engineered, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you need to bring a tank up there. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I'm That's like, yeah, my funny. nephew's going over, and he's little, so if uh, anything happens, I'm. Dead. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's well, cool. I think people people like you are inspiring people to make. I think there's money in those industries too, so they will make a cool. comeback. People, college has kind of been exposed, right? I think people are like starting to wake up and be like, "Yo, we were just, you know, what it is was good marketing." Like, oh, yeah. like now there's parents who are just like. You're going to college, but I don't think that I think that's subsiding. And with people like you going out there and actually teaching these kids about about you know, mechanical engineering and, and tr you know, climbing trees, like your tree service, like that's inspiring people to, to go in and enter those yeah. industries. Oh yeah. So it's like, I, I, I get it. Like our generation and I think the one before us gets kind of a bad rap for being responsible for all these things. Right. But also think that, you know, it's going to make a comeback. I, I mean, there's a lot of kids th out there. I think it is now. There's I mean, a huge yeah. need. See some it, of that it usually becomes around. a problem before it, it's a problem, and then we have to fix the problem. Yeah, so I mean, we're I, in the problem yeah. stage that's getting fixed. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. so I think that good people with what you guys are doing, with the people that I was in the meeting with before, 
you keep pushing. I mean, oh, there's yeah. a problem there. Like this needs oh, to yeah. be fixed. So yeah. I mean, look at Abbott Tech now. I went there. I mean, back when I went there, it was pretty much everybody got thrown out of every other school. That was a that's what it was like. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. Now, now you now can't you even get, get in. Yeah, yeah, you can't even get you, in there. They yeah. will not take any type of that's crazy. Yeah, but then disciplinary the, bullshit. Uh, you're out. Yeah. Like they. But now the problem is, you look at their success rate for college acceptance. It's like in the 90th percentile. Yeah, that's the wrong. That's the wrong reason. I know. Like all these kids, I went there and did something. They're talking about, oh, we get them ready for college. I'm like, isn't that not what this school is supposed to be? Go do your apprenticeship. Uh, If you're HVAC and you go out two years and, you know, by year three, you're probably going to make six figures out there as a. No, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I like it though. It's a good school. I think it's, um, it's amazing what they've done. Hmm. You know, like you said, like (laughs) it was like, yo, you're going to get your ass kicked if you go to that school or (laughs) they just won't take you at any other school. That's what it was like. Oh, yeah. It's changed so much. So, um, all right, man. Well, Thanks for coming on. You're going to stick around and do Mac Move or Whack Move with us or what? I have no idea what that is. Well, let me tell you. Chase, go ahead. Tell them what Mac Move or Whack Move is all All about. I'm going to pitch a couple topics uh, to you guys, to all of us, and we're going to kind of each – it's all related to business. Uh, So it's new stuff in the news that's kind of relevant. And it's self-explanatory. You say Mac Move if you agree with it, Whack Move if you disagree with it. Um, and I use the soundboard throughout that process. So okay. if you hear any weird shit happening, uh, that, that, that's what it is. Sure. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like All right. Little, so everybody like a take a this. sign, take a sign. Scott, you got yours. Got it. Okay. So whack is, I I'm like just it. I'm fired up to be here today. No, Mac is, I like right. it. This is, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And move. whack is, and whack is, is, I don't like it. It's a whack gotcha. move. It's whack. All right. Ready, Scott? I am ready. What All is right. topic number one? <laughs> Topic number one. So side hustles are on the rise. So the size of the gig economy depends on how you define gig. A survey conducted by Gallup for the New York Times suggested that an increasing number of Americans get at least some of their income through self-employment. In 2017, 17% of tax filers declared such earnings, the highest since 1957. Just over half of these side hustlers also had an employer and most rated their satisfaction higher than other groups, including those who were, who were employed in only one job. So the, the ma- it's this. People who are doing side hustlers or side hustles are successful and they're happier mm-hmm. than people who only have one job and are just doing that. Yeah. So the Mac move or whack move is, do you think that side hustles are a Mac move because <laughs> they are earning you more income and the people are happier? Or do you think it's a whack move you should... F- focus in on one on your career and your op- occupation to try to advance that and yeah, bring it I to mean, new levels. I'm going to go Mac move because how could you at all? I mean, you can't you can't go whack move on this. I think in the in the words of uh, Bruce Lee, you got to practice one kick a thousand times rather than a thousand kicks. Once. I get it, but sometimes people don't have that option. Like yeah. they just got to they got a family and they got to <clears> earn and for them. This has been my whole life of doing the side gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy is <laughs> yeah, like the right? perfect guy. Yeah, to... he's literally the side Plus, gig guy. I mean, even now, I got a whole nother spin on it. So especially living in Connecticut. So with taxation the way it is, if you do not have a small side business that you can write things off, yeah, you're, you're screwed. You're screwed. Yeah, you're better off just setting something up regardless yeah. of what yep. it is. Yeah. Even if you but don't I make think much this money. Number, <laughs> I think this number has climbed the way that it's climbed because of Uber, DoorDash, these type of things, because now it gives somebody the option of having a part-time job that they can do kind of when they want to do it. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's what's increased these numbers. Um, you know, in the last episode, I talked about that law that was passed with inside of California to where they've deemed all of these people <clears throat> as not subcontractors. They've mm-hmm. deemed them as right. employees. Right. Yep. So, and I mentioned this before that, um, and I know that that's kind of our next topic a little bit too, but that's what is going to change those numbers. Like I think those numbers are going to change oh, you're going to see a people little get bit. Cut. Yeah, because because <clears throat> these companies they're not they don't want to pay those benefits. Yeah. Yeah, the overhead structure. Yeah, and huge. they're going to have to play minimum wage and they're going to have to mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes down, mm-hmm. but I'm going Mac move. He's going Mac move. What are you going with, brother? I'm going to go with uh Mac move. I I I can't be like the co-host of this show which is all about entrepreneurship and and hustling. Um and say whack move, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's what we do when when all of us agree. Yeah, that's um, what we do. So that was actually uh, I just hit that by accident. That's my bad. Um, so the original side hustle, though, you guys w- that was always bartender. It's like oh, I work my I work my white collar blue collar job <laughs> Monday through Friday, 
And then on Saturday, I go in and I make 300, 400 bucks or whatever oh, yeah. it is, like yeah. like just bartending. But because of, because of just the digital world we live in, there's just many more opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even but with that's the like, thing that happened with the thing in California, I still think the number is going to climb because this is that's what we live in now. Like, eventually, and this is already happening in Delaware to where Amazon, like in Delaware, UPS doesn't deliver it, Amazon shit. Amazon delivers Amazon shit. And, and basically the guy gets the route. It's like a paper route. Kind right, of. right. Like you get the route and that's what it's going to be for a lot of different things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, let's go on to the next topic here. A little bit, a little bit, same, same, a little bit different. What do we got here, Chase? Go ahead. All right. The topic is Uberpreneur. I coined that term. He coined so that I term. made that. He I did. made that he up. Made that. Uh, no Uber drivers are not entrepreneurs they are not entrepreneurs so according to this guy he's a, his name is uh jeff jo- jeffrey james he says uh uber drivers are contract labor yes they get to set their own hours but that's also true of manufacturing laborers who are paid according to how many items they produce or agricultural workers who are paid by the bushel quote unquote the true bushel. entrepreneurs start businesses by doing something new not just filling a role in, a, in another business so the question you know are uber drivers Entrepreneurs. Yes. I don't think so. Yeah, so they, that would be a whack move. I'm going to go with whack move. I don't think they're entrepreneurs. But they're pretty damn close. I mean, there's They're a really big, close. I th- like, well, I think you could make that an extremely profitable business venture, how you do it. But I don't know that you're starting something and driving it you know, from zero to hero type of thing. Yeah. Which like, is more entrepreneurial. The thing is, is that the, the, the model caps you. As to where that makes it tough to be an entrepreneur, like you can't. I was. Yeah. What's the I difference? I view that between... as kind of it's good filler work. It could be. It could be a total career. It could be, a, a, you know, a great supplemental income. Yeah, a revenue side stream. Gig, yeah, it's kind say. of that side gig. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, I agree with you guys. Whack move. Um, I don't think they're entrepreneurs. Uh, I think that entrepreneur is a very special individual. Yep. I think uh, that both of you guys have a lot of those qualities, but it's not just because you you drive Uber and you have a side hustle doesn't make you an entrepreneur. Right. Not being an entrepreneur requires, you know, innovation, risk financially, and you know, physically. And be able to get a car over the over a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? So yeah, no whack move. All Uber, right. Uber drivers are not entrepreneurs necessarily. This is a very trending story. Topic number three, Chase. All right, let me pull. Sorry, I keep it. All right, topic number three. I have great. these notes. Baby Yoda toys. All right, you know Baby Yoda, the little boy. Mandalore. Have you seen the show? No. No. I want to see it. I haven't seen it either, but it, like just because of that. I but want you've to see been it. seeing the Baby Yoda. Yeah, right? but you've been I seeing mean, the Baby Yoda. Over. Yeah, it's everywhere now. It's taken um, over. So Disney held off on producing Baby Yoda merchandise because the Mandalorian creator, John Favreau, who also did Avengers, wanted to avoid spoilers uh, before the series debuted on Disney+. Plus. Well, that means Disney failed to cash in on Baby Yoda's popularity immediately during the holiday season. The company will still make a mint from the character if Amazon's rankings are any indication. But Amazon rankings, this is like the number three most or four most ordered item right now on the okay. internet. And nobody's going to be receiving these toys until February. Uh, right. So the Mac move or whack move is really... Was it a good move to do that? To hold not? off on creating this toy? Or should they have cashed in on the holiday clutter? Do you think it doesn't matter that... It, whether they cashed in on it I'm going to say that it's a whack move. I'm going to go on a risky side of it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> maybe they built enough sensationalism and media jive about it that it will pay off. Yeah, because no people matter keep what. talking about how they can't right. get it. Right. And people, and keep pe- want, people want things yeah. they can't have and they yeah. want it even more. Yeah. I hear what you're saying with that, but I'm going to go whack move um, because, you know, you got to ride this shit when it's hot. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to ride it when it's hot. Okay. I mean, but they're still getting the sales, though, are they not? That's the only reason it made because normally, I mean, they're I'd still put my getting manufacturing the sales. Hat on, it's time to market. Yeah, and, and you're, that's what I mean. When yeah. you get it out, is so crucial and so. But key. if you sell but the they're same having amount the sensationalism of, it, of all these sales already, free advertising so I'm like, it. yeah. It yeah. kind of throws a spin it's on. It's kind of like the, the, the Popeye's chicken sandwich. They yeah. just take it away from you. I, <laughs> you you yeah. want it so bad. I'm actually going Mac move. All I right. think it creates right. scarcity. People are going to yeah. buy this more now. Yeah. And it, and it's just even more in the news. It's already in the news. It's now more in the news. Like, 
Like we're gonna be seeing these things everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the Cabbage Patch doll from back in the eighties. Yep. It just went insane. Yeah. And then they were worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a yep. twelve dollar item. And you know what it is? Literally, Sour it's Patch a, Kids were better though. Uh, Remember those? Those it, were awesome. Yeah. Those cards. It's a plush. <laughs> it's just a plush, like Baby Yoda doll. Like yeah. it's nothing. Like there's nothing. It doesn't do anything. You know, it's just like a plush t- thing that you you know hold at night. Right. It's it's hilarious, but. But I we also get this think, thing every year. We get an object like this every year. But like, what type of spoilers would he be avoiding? Exactly? Oh, because Baby Yoda wasn't released until or wasn't revealed until like the third episode or something, which oh, okay. was like two or three weeks uh, ago. Right. So I guess they didn't want to start mm-hmm. manufacturing these toys until after the episode. Huh. Interesting. Uh, interesting. All right, what do we got on the next one there, Buster? All right, what is this topic, topic number four? Four. All right. Grocerants are on the rise. What is a grocerant? Imagine going to a grocery store for dinner, not to pick up a rotisserie chicken to take home, but to actually eat it at the store. As online grocery shopping grows, many supermarkets are adding sit-down restaurants in an attra- movement to attract more millennials, and it seems to be working. Some of these restaurants, grocerants, also have uh, grocerants. bars. It's the worst name they, ever. You could get loaded and then go uh, go grocery shopping if you're into that kind of thing. Well, they'll make twice as much money then. The cart will be twice as full. Exactly. <laughs> Wait till they put the freaking the the, the weed uh, the weed weed dispensary next. Yeah. Oh, Wait till yeah. they do that. That's a wrap. Gross sales just went up eighty <laughs> yeah. percent. So, yeah. I mean, I I'm this one right here, Matt has twenty beers on tap. <laughs> they have twenty beers on tap at this grocery store. They're gonna make well now all of a sudden all the men are gonna want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're doing. They're trying to get the man demographic in there. I mean, the cafe is already you know like the. The cap, like you have the, you know, like Big Y or some of these other places, they have a little area yeah. to sit and you can get a slice of pizza or well, whatever. Look at Stu Leonard's. They're killing it. Yeah. With their, what is it, the Mo Down outside? I mean, yeah, yeah. Go by ho their, down. The Ho Down. They yeah, crush it. Yeah, you go there on a Friday night, it's packed in August. They're saying here, um, that's true though. Stu's has been doing this for a while. Big up to but Stu's. But this is, this is taking it is, up a notch. Stu's doesn't have $2 pints with 20 yeah. taps. <laughs> They need to get on that, though. Well, yeah. I mean, anything. I think In that could... parking lot, bro? <laughs> yeah. In that parking oh, yeah. lot? You... It'd be a shit show if they had 20 oh, taps yeah. and yeah. stews. <laughs> if you right? build it, they will come. <laughs> It'd be drunk bastards in that little farm in yeah. the front. They'll be, be like, oh, let's go and pet yeah. the cat, little kitty There'll be, cat, there'll be five cattle. cops on duty all the time on yeah. the parking lot. Right? That's pretty funny. Um, I don't know, Chase. What are you going with? You're the millennial. I'm going Mac Move. I think this will be a pretty successful endeavor for those who are, are willing enough to risk that. I, like it. Um, I think it's going to have some success. Maybe not as much as we expect it to have, but I think people are going to go in droves. You know, I'm, it's almost like a like a you yeah. go to they're going to put a club in there too at some point. Bring yeah, that, let's go clubbing. <laughs> yeah, I got to grab some milk and bring that, uh, uh, bring that Caldor's pretzel to the next <laughs> level. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll, I'll go. I'll go Mac move. I'm, yeah, I'm down with this. Me too. I'm down with this. You know yeah. what I mean. So that gets a number two. Um, all right. So. Last topic, right, Chase? Last topic. Uh, this one's just kind of a quick little, um, you know, would you or wouldn't you kind of use this new product? <laughs> it's tube-free toothpaste. Rather than being squeezed from a plastic tube, the change toothpaste tablets oh. are packaged in a compostable paper bag. Interesting. To use the toothpaste, simply bite down on a tablet, brush your teeth with a wet toothbrush, which will cause the tablet to foam and taste like standard toothpaste. It's going to be so hard to get people out of this regular routine. No, I'm totally on board with it. You like it? Yeah. No, I have this thing that scares me in my house. So uh, my girlfriend has a 7-year-old yep. and 11-year-old. And I'll go in and I see the tube has been crushed in oh this way. God. Then I'm like, this is like yeah. a serial killer. Yeah. Who does this yeah. to yeah, toothpaste? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who does this? Yeah, serial killer. Psychopath. I'm like... <laughs> How dare you? How yeah. dare I got, you? Then I got to iron it all back out, squeeze it all the way back into the end, <laughs> load it up. I'm like, this is miserable. Maniacs. This should never happen. Maniacs. My you mom has those. That thing. You, it's actually something that goes at yeah. the bottom of the yeah, tube and you push it up. It up. Oh, have yeah. you ever seen those? Those are good because yeah. it really yeah. makes it to where you can't. Yeah. You can't do that. Plus, yeah. I have this compulsive thing. You would think I grew up in the Depression, yeah. that I have to get every little tiny bit out, out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly's like, uh, we need to throw that out like two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. And, and I'm like, like no. Nope. We got three and then more. If she, and if she brings out a new one before, I get pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's not done so yet. So that's cost effective because it's, <laughs> yeah. one, it's one little thing. He's going to yeah. be like, 
You can't open the new bag. Somebody must have lost a little. <laughs> There's little still pebble. like three or four <laughs> yeah. molecules I'll be the, in I'm there. I'm the toothpaste Nazi, apparently. You're like this. You're like the little the little crumblings at the bottom. You're like, "There's one more. Put put that in your mouth. Shake the shake." Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you got the whole organic packaging thing. So you got a lot of people who jump on that, and then no plastics. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go whack move, and I'm the reason why is I don't think that it's gonna you're gonna be able to get people out of this routine. Like, did you know how hard it was? This is kind of a weird topic to get people to actually start brushing their teeth. I read this whole thing about it. It was really hard. It was like something really hard to do. Think about why would it be something really hard to do? It just seems so, you know what I mean? Like, people aren't going to change. They're, they're not, you know. All right. I'm going Mac move. I love it. I would totally do this. Also, the the compostable yeah. thing. That's yeah. great. It's green. Here's my, here's my age, response. No. His here's, age, yes. here, here's my response to that. Make it a subscription service. Make it make from point A to point B for the co- consumer as easy as possible. If they sign up for one one package of that to get delivered to them, have it be a, a you know give them a month free on top of that, and then they'll be customers forever. Yep. Yep. And it, and it'll actually they'll, it'll be easier for them to make that change because they're they're getting it. You Do know, they have on a, a CB- subscriptions basis? If they have a CBD version, I might switch. I might go. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I, or just put yeah. CBD in it. I yeah. mean, you, that's, yeah. that shit sells yeah. like hotcakes, yeah. you know? All right, so that concludes Mac Move or Whack Move. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's it. And Top that, that concludes actually this episode of the Mac Talks number 48. We're going to be riding into the holiday season. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And usually when we make comments like that, what we usually say is, but you won't be hearing this podcast till mid-February. But... It could that's, actually come out. That's no longer the case because we've yeah. got we've got our guy on it, and he's been edit, editing them very fast, and he's been knocking them out, and it goes by the name of Big Time Tommy. Right there, yep. that guy right there is coming Big in, Big Time Tommy, knocking them out, and uh, shout out to Tommy. Shout out to shout Tommy. Out to he's, Tommy. He's, uh, don't, Respect. Uh, Respect. Look at Tommy. He's like, it's not me. I'm getting help from Matt and the crew in there. And God. Shout out to the video department, right, <laughs> for turning out these podcasts. But definitely shout out to our French arborist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only a tiny bit French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flaming Irish. Thank you so much for uh, for coming on. Um, definitely have her hit me up about you know doing that yep. speaking. And uh, obviously, we're going to be seeing each other, Chase. You want to plug um, your socials and stuff? Yeah, for, what's, for your, uh, what's the Bart's website? Bart's Tree Service? Uh, Bart'sTreeService.com. Yep. And it's Bart's Tree Service on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Yeah, so if you need to take some shit down, he's your guy. He is your guy. To call. All right, Chase, why don't you go ahead and uh, close us out there, buddy? All right, as always, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, The best way to help the podcast is to leave us a five-star review, only a five-star review. If you're going to leave a four-star, just don't even bother, on (laughs) iTunes. Also, you can find us at www.themactalks.com. Uh, you can find us on all of our different platforms there. Otherwise, go to go to Instagram at M A C K Talks. Uh, go to Facebook, type in the Mac Talks. We'll show up. Spotify, SoundCloud, all of <laughs> get after it. Happy holidays, everybody from from Mac Media Group and the Mac Talks, and everybody here on this podcast. Enjoy it. Happy holidays. Yes, happy happy holidays. holidays. Take care. All right. Peace.